Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you're having a good week so far. I know we're in the middle of it. Now, this week you're saying, why is Zeke here instead of one of our elders doing the midweek message? Well, they found out that this week's location was going to be in the closet by the furnace. And we decided, let's do something different. Each week, we've been working really hard to put together videos that dive into the lives of family members here at our church. And this week, you're going to be seeing from our children's ministries with Lisa Cervantes. Uh, in the coming weeks, you'll get to know some of the office staff and how things have affected them. But this week, we wanted to go back and uh, take another listen to Danita Hunter's video. So enjoy. That is this week's weekly message, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Enjoy the video. for being willing to come and meet with me this afternoon and let me ask a few questions of you. So you've been on the worship team for a little while now. Uh, about how long? Probably um, the beginning, from the get beginning, about five years altogether. But as a worship leader, going on four. Okay. So about four years ago, Pastor Bill put together a group of musicians and at that time, it was going to be for about a year. And we are going on four years now. <laughs> if you had known then what was going to transpire this last six months with COVID and all the changes that were going to need to be made, would you have agreed then to be a part of that team? Um, I cannot speak for the rest of the worship team, but for myself, no, I would not have agreed to do it. I would not have felt equipped. Um, I would not have felt I had the skills to do this sort of ministry. And um, the only reason I'm still here, really, is because that first year, um, I learned a lot and became really good friends with the other worship leaders, and um, we taught each other um, how to do this new ministry, and I became more comfortable. And so when we needed to do it another year, and then another year, I was um, thankfully and um, really happy to continue on with it. But um, knowing the six months and how much would be required and how ill-equipped I would feel, no, I would not have said yes at the beginning. <laughs> I'm sure glad that you did. <laughs> what are some of the adjustments that you've had to make this last six months? Well, the first um, scary thing was not being able to see each other, mm -hmm. not being able yeah. to meet and um, <clears throat> It was just very difficult not to be able to be together. And so the way that we did music was to do everything from home. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we had to uh, receive instruction on how to download a program that would record our voices in um, an appropriate way so that our tech team could put them together and, and make a video to share with the body. And so that was new. And... Um, <clears throat> so that's that was been has been a challenge for me personally. I think for the others as well. Um, and then, uh, oh, let's see, figuring out technology, just figuring out how to yes. do it when we had not done it this way before at all. Mm -hmm. And then um, we would meet together um, virtually as a as worship leaders and would come up with a plan, and we would be working on that plan from week to week while still planning for the next phase mm -hmm. of COVID and how we might move forward from there. So how have the last six months increased your faith? Has it? It has. It surely has. Um, I, you know, like I said, each step, each new year um, that we agreed to continue to do this, um, built on the net the last year. And so it wasn't very difficult to continue. 
But when we moved into this COVID thing mm -hmm. and we, I sing, I sing, I sing only. I don't play an instrument. So everything that I did from home, I had to depend on somebody else, one of the other worship leaders to support me. And um, not that they minded that I could tell, but they, um, I could not do anything on my own. And I began to feel like a real burden to the team. I, I felt uh, that, that I had nothing of value to give, that by supporting me and able, enabling me to continue with this, um, I was adding more to their plate. And they're learning the same things I was learning. And mm -hmm. so I just didn't feel like I didn't have anything to give, really. And I didn't want to be a a burden to the other team mem members. And I was um, praying about that a lot. And uh, it occurred to me, I think I talked to you about it, <laughs> that I was feeling like maybe it was time to quietly slip out of worship leadership, that maybe that's just the way God was leading. So I did a lot of praying, a um, lot of time in my Bible, trying to figure out and uh, what to do. I consulted with Pastor Tom. I finally, you know, confessed to Pastor Tom that I, I don't think I have anything. I don't think I have anything to give. And so he was um, very helpful in helping me to make a decision. And that was an, a nice thing too, to be able to do, because I had always depended so much on Pastor Bill and he just wasn't available. He was uh, ill for a lot of the time. And um, we, so we didn't, we didn't meet with him. We began to meet with Pastor Tom and that was a real blessing to get to know him and to um, hear his heart a bit about how he thought of, of worship through music. So, so I struggled, but um, can I read a verse? I would love it if you read a verse. Okay. One of the things that really, uh, the verses that I just kind of clung to through this time was Philippians 4, 6 and 7. <clears throat> and it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I thought that was so funny that it's the peace that guards your hearts and minds. So if you can commit your way, whatever it is, no matter how ill-equipped you feel, um, then God will give you peace. And that guards your heart and your mind where you begin to doubt yourself and your worthiness and your value. And um, so that was just a huge thing to me. And it's one of those uh, circumstances that a lot of people go through that may not seem really, really huge. You know, I'm not going into the wild to minister to, you know, people that have never heard about God. I'm just trying to decide to be on a worship team or not. But for me, it made a huge impact. Those verses were huge to me. And I think that they will continue to guide me as I go along. So what word of encouragement would you give to somebody who's thinking about doing a ministry, but not quite sure because... They don't know what it'll look like with COVID and with things changing. What would you say to that person? I would say um, another place that I went to in the Bible was Exodus 4. And um, God is telling Moses all of the things that he's going to need him to do. And Moses says, I, I can't even talk. You know, I, I don't know how in the world I'm ever going to do something like this. But God provided a way for Moses mm -hmm. to do what he asked him to do. So um, if you're feeling like you need to, or you'd like to be involved in some sort of service at the church, and it keeps niggling at you, um, get into your Bible for sure and see what the Bible says. Um, consult with trusted um, other Christians for sure. Pray, but and jump in. God will supply. If he calls, he'll supply. Well, thank you so much, Danita, for being willing to take some time and just share with us what's on your heart and what you've been learning and how you've been growing. We appreciate that. And we love you leading worship out there, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome.
Again, thank you, Danita, for sharing. It's been tough, and we really appreciate you. We'll see you guys next week from another Undisclosed Wood Village Baptist location.